to have Comrade Olufemi Lawson, the Executive Director of Center for Public Accountability in the Saha TV studio. It's a pleasure having you. It's my pleasure being here. Controversy continues to trail the Land Use Charge Act um, that was uh, brought on by the Lagos State Government. And um, if, as of today, protest on the streets uh, as far as this is concerned. But your group, uh, your organization comes to say no, the crime, rich crime wolf. Why? Well, I think to start with, it is important to say that uh, the Center for Public Accountability <coughs> is a registered community-based organization in Lagos here. Yeah? Number two, we have also made some interventions before the latest one, which uh, of course was that statement uh, being referred to. And uh, I'll be speaking not only from the point of the executive director of that center, but also from the vantage privilege point of being a house owner in Lagos. And I want to say that, uh, like we have stated in our public statements, that uh, a lot of misinformation deliberately are being made to make this battle, so to put it, look like a battle between the government of Lagos State and the poor people of Lagos State. We've done our own statistical analysis. We've done our own assessment independently. And we have come to realize that the people, though vocal, that are opposed to this you know, land use charge are you know, a very, just a vocal mi minority. And it is also important to say that this law is not a new law. A lot of people, you know, especially in the social media, you know, goes around claiming that, oh, the Lagos State just brought out a law that mandates house owners to pay each sums of money. And, and I want to blame the Lagos State government specifically for that because you, it is a duty of government to educate the people, to carry the people along in implementing policies that, that have a direct impact on them. No matter how laudable these ideas are, when the people are in the dark, when they are not informed, I want to say here that Lagos State did not do enough to, in, to carry Lagosians along in, re, in the review of this law, the law that is about, it's over 15 years of existence, but in reviewing it, the citizens were not carried along enough in terms of public awareness, in terms of education. And that is what has created this you know, effect that this minority have capitalized on. And I want to imagine that, like I insisted, that the very few people that are going to be affected are people who have always been privileged in this society. They are people who have always not actually want to pay taxes, the, the big people, when I put it in quote, the big people in this society, but to the ordinary people and to ordinary negotiations, I don't think this new land use charge is going to have any burden on us or on the ordinary people. In fact, in some cases, there are total exemptions to the people you can really call the downtrodden in this society by the, going by the classification you know, and the arrangement made by the state government. So even though I personally have a, you know, a lot of strong opposition to a lot of policies of government, particularly the party in government, you know, in the state. But I must, of the truth, say that the, the, it is a, it's a battle between the of the elites and these people who are vocal against the implementation of the new, you know, newly reviewed land use charge are just a very few people who are trying to hide under the banner of the suffering of our people, you know. To just uh, create a scenario like we are currently experiencing. Now let, 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 let's look at some of these exemptions that you talked about. I mean, for example, we this is on the from the perspective of those who are actually calling for the uh, the abolishment of that uh, law. Like it talks about pensioners are exempted, but the pensioners are those who had served under the Lagos State. I mean, how does that apply to somebody who has never served under the Lagos State government? Well, well, okay? well, if perhaps there are pensioners who have not served under the Lagos State government. You know, these exemptions is not just it's not about the Lagos State pensioners alone. The faith-based organizations, the non-governmental organizations, you know, are exempted. I also want to say that most of those areas, if you do your evaluation, like I told you, we did a lot of assessment before coming out with our position. 
And if you do your own valuation, for instance, let's take an area like Ajangbadi, you know, or Okokomaiko. Let us take a visit to Okokomaiko. Let us do an assessment of a hundred houses in Okokomaiko. Hardly will you find a single house that will be valued at the rate, you know, where each house would, would be, be made to pay more than 5,000 to 6,000 naira. In, our, in my own house now, on the basis of these newly introduced charges, it is just going to be 9,100 naira. It is clear. And you see, the very few, like I keep saying, are people who have properties, you know, that are worth millions and billions, who are not used to the culture of paying. Because a lot of these people that you claim, you know, at the downtrodden really, are actually the people that have been servicing these rich people. We pay the taxes, you know, through our lock-up shops, through the markets here. The money, you know, initially will be taken to Lekki to build, you know, the drainages there, to build the roads in Lekki, to, to develop Ikoya and Victoria Island. But I think that is what the Lagos State government now as it is, is deviating from. Now, why don't you also get money from these people to service the rest of the state, from my own perspective? Because if you look at it today, how much is the Lagos State government going to generate on land discharges in Ijegu, in Ikotu, in Badagri? In fact, the government even specifically said it. Some places will not pay. People in, in Ikorodu, how do you want to value or access you know, their houses? Or what, are, what, what, are, what are we going to call the charges? But the people who are afraid of paying these taxes are people who, in most cases, have underdeclared their asset, asset. People who, in most cases, cannot really explain the source, you know, or the sources of all these huge mansions and duplexes, a lot under lock and key in Ikoya, you know, Victoria Garden City that are not even occupied. Now they are afraid of paying tax, taxes on these on these properties, and that is why we are saying it is now time for the rich to service the poor. The poor of this society, particularly in Lagos State, have been expropriated for a long period. They have been made to service these people. And that is why today, if you go to Lagos, where you find the best of roads, where you buy, find the best of infrastructures, where places dominated by these people who are complaining today. But look at it. You are complaining today because you have been paying 10,000 naira, 800 for your house in Ekoi. But now you have been asked to come and pay 250 naira, 1,000 naira. It becomes a crime. But while you were paying that 10,000, 800 naira. The same man in Ikotu was paying 10,800 10, naira or 5,000 or 8,000 as the case may be. But now they are, they are agitating just because they want to pay the same thing like the man in Ajangbadi, Ajegun and Badagri. We need to look into details of this and I think, like I keep saying, Lagos State Government has a lot of role to play in educating the ordinary people. So that, because this information flying around, the oh, house rent will increase, you know, even on the social media, ah, it is about, oh, I said, for instance, if I have had a tenant, and I'm maybe in, in my area, renting a flat is about 300 to 350,000, and if I have had a tenant, would I, because of 9,100, have asked the man to come and, you know, pay extra charges? But you know, that's the tendency of an average yeah, no, 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 land. The body, no, we they, pay charges, we, you know, we, we do that almost they every hide day. Under in the those room. houses where people are, you know, pre people buy water, they supply the electricity, electricity for basic, you know, taxes and basic amenities, we have always been doing that for ourselves as Nigerians. But make, mean, making it to look like a burden that will add, you know, a considerable or a, a large amount of money again to existing rents, you know, on the ordinary people, I don't think it is right. And I think the government must be on the lookout for people who may, who may want to exploit this situation. It's like those landlords who are not going to be paying or those who have been given rates between uh, 5,000, 9,000, as my own case, now using that as another enemy. That is why the initial law doing that has to do with the, you know, the, the rent tribunal must also be made to be effective so that people don't exploit people using this situation. And this has to be done through the instrumentality of education. The ordinary man in Ajegule must know that my landlord is not paying any one million. So he cannot come back and say, Lagos State has taken one million from him. If the man in, 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 in VGC wants to increase rent from 3 million to 3.5 million because he has been made to pay 2 million to the government, it should be you know, enough for the tenant to have known through the public education that the government uh, must have offered. But I think, like I want to insist, that it is not a battle of the ordinary people because it is one of the issues we raised with the NBA. In this state, 
this country that you and I are today. For four months, we have had to drive long distances to get fuel in our cars. If you leave Lagos today, or you are not in Abuja, there's no way in major part of these countries where you can buy petrol for 145. I just drove back from Enugu a few days ago. I had the Snapchat here. When I get to these few stations, I take shots. If I, they are not just selling for 200. They have adjusted pump price. In this country, these are issues. And who is buying this petrol? The fognizer, the man that is taking two liters home for the generator because there will be no power. You know, the man, the transporter, these are people, these are issues that have direct, immediate impact on the people, burden on the people. In these states, where NBA is going to court today, people have been taken on the street for just trying to find means of livelihood. A lot are all into the black Maria, taking, you know, ending in the prisons just because they left their home to go and look for. These are issues that have a direct bearing on the majority of the people. NBA is not going to court. NBA is not you know, take, giving government ultimatum when people were in this state buying petrol for 180, 190. NBA is going to court and is threatening government just because of their clients in Lekia and Ikoyi who have been asked to come and pay huge taxes. I don't think it's a battle of the people and NBA must state its ca case clearly enough. It, NBA has the right to de defend its clients. A lot of them have even left the court for property businesses. So we can understand where they are coming from. But they should not, you know, give an impression that it is the government of the states and the people of Lagos State. I don't want to agree with that. Now, one of the issues being raised uh, in support of the land use act by the Lagos State government has to do with infrastructural deficiency. And part of the arguments that some uh, of those who are antagonists to it uh, said that Lagos cannot become a mega city in just one day. I mean. Besides, you are deodorizing one part of Lagos while ghettoizing other parts of Lagos. What's your take on this? Well, I want to agree to, to an extent with the Lagos State government in its argument that these taxes, when eventually raised, you know, will allow the government to be able to focus, you know, infrastructural development on some neglected parts of the state. The truth is that between 1999. And now let us take it from there. If you look at the concentration of infrastructural developments in Lagos, it has been mainly focused on the central part of Lagos and hugely on the Lagos Island, you know, the hybro areas of Lagos. And in the last three years, if you look at the approach of the current administration of Mr. Kiwume Ambode, you understand that it is shifting its focus from what we used to know about the focus of government taking huge projects you know, to the mainland and the island to so the interior parts of Lagos. And that is why for the first time, you have something like what you have in Abuli Ekba, the Jubilee flyover. And for all those who are familiar with that road, in fact, at the time that the government was, you know, the federal government was working on the road, building the Abuli and the Songwater Bridge, there has been a demand for the bridge in Nabili Egba, but nobody ever thought it as a priority. And every time we want to advance this argument, it is just because of the category of people who were considered to be under axis. The government does not see a lot of Nigerians, a lot of us who are not living either in VGC, Lekki, you know, or the Banana Islands, are having such stakes or you know, the voices loud enough to you know, attract you know, and a lot of times you look at the funny considerations that the government in Nigeria give towards citing projects in some places. You want to, you know, I've driven to places on the island and you want to, you don't need to be told that somebody, a VIP lives there. And if by accident you now find yourself in any part of these abandoned zones, if you find any key infrastructure or let's put it just a, a street that is well, you know, tarred, you know, well, you know, constructed, you must know that somebody must have influenced it from somewhere. Those were things that never had you know, a, an impact on the generality of the people. But now, we have a deviation from that tradition. We have you know, government focusing on development on that axis. You know, I keep saying this, I've never been a friend of this government, but the truth is that as a stakeholder in the state, I must not look the other way 
when things are right, just because, you know, I want to be correct. Look at the, the project started by the Middle Pass governor, the 10 lane going to Badagri. It is the aspiration of the, the average person out of the farm at Okwafo. You understand? So if you look at the ordinary persons coming from my two, having anything to do, you, anytime you go through that place, your prayer will just be like, like this road should be completed tomorrow. These are, and if you look at the population of people in these areas, these are the people that makes up these 20 something million. You are hearing about Lagos. It is not those very few people who are in this Ibero area. Now look at that, that is ongoing now. In Ali Moshona, a lot of places where ordinarily have been inaccessible are now you know, being aggressively you know, transformed. And I think it is not going to be, to be too much for government to shift focus from developing this area that people have so much enjoyed development since 1999 to areas where people are yearning you know, for serious development. So I think if by the argument of the state government that increasing these charges would you know, shift focus of government towards expanding infrastructural development and beyond shifting focus, we must also understand that we need serious expansion for infrastructures. Look at the simple attempt at putting a BRT lane between the Kedja and Nabuleba. Look at what we are going through now. Because the infrastructures are choked. These were roads built when it, was, you know, it could be only be 1,000 cars in a day. The same roads now having 20,000, 30,000 cars in a day. You will understand that there is a clear need for expansion. So now, and what has exposed that road is that BRT lane. Because it has clearly shown that, so we have this huge number of cars. It, it will take you about two hours between Abilegba, between the Yanokwaja and Ikeja on a good day now because of the expansion work. So if we have a government who is ready to use this money judiciously to expand these infrastructures, I think the people should be ready to cooperate and pay. But as an organization, we will not just stop at encouraging government to take money from the rich to service the poor. We also have a duty as citizens to ensure that we monitor how these monies are spent. We must and we will. The Center for Public Accountability is doing that. We've set up a mechanism. We are going to ensure that against what the Lagos State government have been known for, not honoring FY requests, we, we are going to ensure that. That, 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 that's, that's yes, that's my next question. We are, we are that, going that, there. That, that, there's a lot of questions as far as transparency is concerned and accountability is concerned for Lagosians and especially when it comes to infrastructure. A lot of like, Lagosians don't even know how much so most of these infrastructures are. And despite attempts to, I mean, for to send the FOI request, this government has just turned, I mean, refused to open up its uh, books. Doesn't that give one the cause of concern that these funds will not be judicially? Judicial? Yeah, that argument has been the argument of, you know, patriotically concerned Lagosians, not no being advanced by some of these elements who do not just want to pay. But to us and to some people who have been making this demand, I think it is not time to keep quiet. And I think this is going to be a major opportunity for the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kiwemi Ambodi, to prove people wrong by ensuring that the books are opened. He promised in a town hall meeting just a few days ago that the government will be transparent in, in the spending of these funds that are going to be raised through these taxes. Now the government must be able to open these books so that as a citizen, it will increase our confidence in the government if we have access to information about how these funds that are generated are used. And that is why beyond what we are going to be doing as CPA, the media, you have been doing excellently well in this regard. I want to call on Nigerians, particularly Lagosians, to intensify the pressure on demanding accountability. If we are going to be paying these huge sums of money, paying taxes through lock-up shops, through putting ball in your house, and all sort of taxes we pay in this country, we must not leave it at just paying and keeping our receipts. We must press further at ensuring that we know how this money has been, have been spent. And that is what I want to admonish Nigerians, particularly Lagosians, that we must begin to demand for accountability. The governor, and the government in Lagos State must be ready to tell Lagosians how our money is being spent. And I think this will boost the confidence of the people. This will even, you know, allow people who are, you know, so used to evading taxes, you know, to key into the drive of the government 
towards increasing you know, generation, uh, generation of revenue. Finally, great. Um, the organized sector, private sector also came at that thing, which is the, the land use charge is also going to affect adversely, has it going to negatively impact on businesses in Lagos. And uh, it gives one a cause of concern. And uh, one begins to wonder also why due, I mean, adequate due process, well, legislative procedures was not observed when before the law was actually passed because they said no proper uh, dialogue, uh, you know, stakeholders were not carried along, just as you had stated earlier. I mean, now the Lagos State government, go, governor is calling for dialogue in this regard. I mean, what's your view on this? No, dialogue must be continued. It must be, the engagement must be continuous. But I want to say that a lot of times as Nigerians, you know, especially when sometimes when I listen to the news or on the social media and I see the reaction of the people, there's a lot of ignorance in the air, and every time I keep pushing this blame on the government because the job of public enlightenment should not be toyed with. Like I said earlier, this is not a new law, and why this law was going to be reviewed, how many of us in Lagos are aware that there was a public hearing? I was, I was aware there was a public hearing. How many of these organizations sent representatives to go and oppose this review. Some of these organizations said they were, they, they were not even even. Yeah, I mean, as an ordinary citizen, just because I take my time, I, in fact, I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I foreclose to put it into activities of government, sometimes more than personal uh, activities, because, so, because anytime these issues like policies of government are being mentioned, I'm always looking at what could be the implication on the ordinary persons. Well, a lot of times, because these people are used to believing that you know, the burden of making Lagos to work should be shared equally between the man in Banana Island and the man in Ajangbadi. They felt so relaxed. And while this process of review was going on, a lot of them never, never participated, including the NBA. And there was a public hearing. Look at how well Nigerians in the last couple of year, years have been able to use public hearing to defeat a lot of anti-people policies, in the National Assembly in particular. You, you imagine when uh, the, the, the not social media bill came. You know, a, a lot of instances where the people, through public hearing, have rejected you no know, legislations. Where were these people when public hearing was conducted you know, for this review? They were nowhere because they thought it is going to be what will lead to government serving a notice of 5,000 for the man in Kingsway, Ikoya, and the man in Koto. But eventually, that was not the outcome. And that is why today they are feeling very, very agitated. Like I said, I will encourage government to continue to engage them, but the interests of the ordinary people must always be put you know, forward at the fore. Because the truth is that we have more people, more people. How many as this do we have in Lagos? Less than one million. For a population of 20 something million, that will tell you the number of our people who, after the close of work today, are going under no shelter than the Kedja Bridge or Balinde Bridge. The number of our people who do not know what next? Where to have the next meal? You know, before the day runs. And see, there are issues that, and these are people who are in a very huge number. And if care is not taken, they will even become a threat to our existence as a people who feel we are comfortable. And that is why I think these people should be interested in how the government will create infrastructure and environment that will accommodate this very, very, you know, underprivileged people in our society. Comrade, thank you very much for sharing your perspective on this issue. It is my pleasure.